used to hire quote unquote experienced guys. We don't do that now. We now we hire on uh, personality more than skill. I mean, we are very hesitant about hiring anybody in the garage door space that has experience because they usually have a lot of really bad habits and that takes longer to fix than the uh, guys that we train from the uh, from the get-go on the skill set side. So, you know, my, our, on those guys, I mean, that when we are interviewing them, it's really, you know, can I stand and do I want do I want to be in a room with you for more than 30 minutes? Because that's what's going to happen when you're working on somebody's door. And so, if I can enjoy being in your presence for 30 minutes, you'll probably be a decent fit, as long as you have just a slight bit of mechanical ability. Now, one of the, I mean, some of the best employees I had, we, we've actually hired a few customers. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Today, we look at finding the right people. Finding the right people means you're going to hire people that are the right fit for your company. People are the most important asset within your company, and your systems for hiring matter more than anything else when it comes to bringing in the right people. Because if you never interview the right people, it doesn't matter how good your interviews are, then you're not going to find the right people. You really want to make sure you have all of the systems right for finding the right people. And today, our special guest is the CEO of Wholesale Door Supply. We're here with Vince Hauser. And Vince and I talk about finding the right people. We talk about some of his hidden secrets. We talk about some of the things that he he has uh, stumbled with and had to improve over time. And he talked about some of the details that he has enjoyed um, as he's grown multiple businesses that have made the ink list. So keep that in mind as you listen to today's interview with Vince. My name is Gene Hammett. I am an executive coach. We do leadership development, helping managers become leaders. And we really pride ourselves in working with fast growth companies that are on the they want more growth. They want to, to continue growth. They have a certain level of chaos that needs to be managed and led. They also are looking for an advantage over their peers. Well, that's exactly what we do. If you're curious about the things that we do and you just you want to put your toe in the water, then we invite you to an executive conversation. These are things that we do for host of the show, guest of the show, uh, listeners of the show, and people in our network, sometimes our customers. Uh, we get together and we talk about a certain topic. Uh, the next one coming up is around hiring in alignment with today's topic, but the next one after that is going to be about, you know, selling your company. What are, what are the PE companies looking for when they go to sell? So if those things interest you, just go to uh, correlation.com forward slash virtual conversations, and you'll be able to find um, how to register for that and see if the next one's right for you. My name is Gene Hammett. Now here's the interview with Vince. Hey Vince, how are you? Very good. We are going to have a great conversation today talking about leadership, talking about your company, but also talking about how do we find the right people. Before we go any further, Vince, I've already let them know a little bit about you, but tell us about Wholesale Door Supply. Uh, well, it was started um, about six years ago, and uh, I have a, another company where we were already in the garage door space on the uh, retail side of it, and uh there were several stars that all kind of aligned at one time and almost slapped me in the face. I'm like, this is an opportunity that I really can't pass up, primarily from the people side of it that became available at one point or all at one point. And uh, so just a few months later, we launched or I launched Wholesale Door Supply. So then I became my big, own biggest customer. I used the other company really to start it because, you know, when, when I first started, I, we had no other customers other than myself. And uh, now it's just a small percentage of it. Fantastic. Um, when you think about your current business, you've made the ink list multiple times. You have multiple businesses that have made it multiple times. It gets harder and harder. Uh, but your people are the central part of that. What, what is it about your people that makes this business just work? Uh, well, I mean, they all, the, the leadership portion of it anyway, they all treat it as they are owners in the company. So that just the ownership mentality um, where they really care about, you know, the, the treatment of the customers and, you know, and, and I, I am very open with P&Ls and, you know, so it, I don't, from the management level, senior management level, um, I don't hide anything from them. 
um, in terms of numbers. We do, they do really well, they see it. They do really bad, they see it. Um, okay. Now, fortunately, we don't have too many really bads. It's it's good or really good for the most part. Well, I know a lot of people are concerned about transparency. And that's what I think of when you say I'm really open. I've got open books and you, you probably have conversations about everything that you need to have mm -hmm. as far as the company and, and your success and people's attitude and all those things. Um, but it really comes down to the people. Would you say that your people are your most important asset within your company? Oh, hundred percent. You know, I mean, without, yeah, I mean, because they, you know, the, the managers and the salespeople, I mean, that's customer facing. So, and I don't really do anything in the day to day. So, I mean, I a hundred percent depend on them to, to really be just an extension of me. A lot of people are probably would love to get to that place. They might be wow. growing a business that might be 5 million in revenue, 10 million, could be less, could be more, but mm -hmm. they're still working in the day-to-day. -day. They still have customer-facing responsibilities. I'm sure you did for a while there. What finally happened for you to get out of the day-to-day -day business? Uh, well, number one, we got big enough that I could afford it. <laughs> I mean, that was the, okay. that was the number one uh, thing that allowed it, you know, but so uh, I have other companies and, and both companies were doing very well at the same time. The the other company is uh, has a much bigger demand for employees than what than what this one does. And uh, so I, as I started just weighing out where my personal time needed to be, I, was, I ended up spending more and more time in the other company on a day to day basis than than this one. But yeah, when it started, it was me and and the general manager for the first six months i mean we were the entire employee well, maybe not six months we hired a driver i think about three months into the to the to deliver um product but then uh you know it, it only took me about a year and a half to where i got out of the day-to-day -day operation but i mean i was fortunate to having a terrific general manager that you know could handle that responsibility now Hiring that first general manager is a very important role. Did you hire a friend? Did you hire someone that you already had worked with before? Or did you take it? Yeah, I, well, I'd worked with him. Um, so we, in the other company, so I bought, or we sell, you know, garage doors to con straight to the consumer. And we sell this stuff too, but that's one division of it. And uh, I had bought from this guy at a, from a different manufacturer that he worked for, for several years. We were the biggest customer that he had and they got bought out a bunch of realignment um, went in when the uh, European company that bought them um, took over and uh, they consolidated a bunch of their distribution long story short he was without a job and uh, I'd already been toying with the idea of doing a distribution center I've been working on it for about six months and I just hadn't been able to find you know, somebody that I thought that could run it. So I never did implement it. And uh, the day that I found that out, I called him like, hey, what, what are you going to do now? Uh, it's like, hell, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I, I have the perfect job for you. So, you know, he took the risk. And I mean, well, we had to play around a non-compete for a while that he had. They gave him a little bit of money when they fired him or whatever that, I, I don't think is a true fire. It was more of a, we're uh, shutting this down. You can go here, you can go there kind of thing. And then he chose not to and left. But uh, but anyway, so I, I hired him at my other company. And actually, he learned a lot more than he ever thought he would by being out there face to face with the customer and not being strictly on the, uh, you know, on the wholesale or the uh, manufacturer side of things. It was one of the best things that ever happened, really. So that's great when you find the right person. I'm sure you've probably hired the wrong person before and oh, that's probably not required you to not hire the right one. <laughs> we've all hired the wrong person before but if if you were able to to look at your hiring practices now versus where they were when you started how would you describe the difference um well i mean i literally i would just i mean uh, we we strictly hired for the skill set or what we thought would be the skill set depending on what on what positions that we were hiring for you know, in the in the garage door business, there's no licensing required, so that makes the hiring process a little easier. So, you know, we don't have to deal with the any type of contractor license on that. So, you know, we would hire. Well, then we used to hire 
quote unquote experience guys. We don't do that now. We now we hire on uh, personality more than skill. I mean, we are very hesitant about hiring anybody in the garage door space that has experience because they usually have a lot of really bad habits and that takes longer to fix than the uh, guys that we train from the uh, from the get go on the skill set side. So, you know, my, on, on those guys, I mean, when we are interviewing them, it's really, you know, can I stand and do I want, do I want to be in a room with you for more than 30 minutes? Cause that's, what's going to happen when you're working on somebody's door. And so if, if I can enjoy being in your presence for 30 minutes, you'll probably be a decent fit. As long as you have just a slight bit of mechanical ability. Now, one of the, I mean, some of the best employees I had, we, we've actually hired a few customers you know, on, on the wholesale side, uh, these, so these were other business owners that, uh, you know, in the garage door space, along with a lot, some other trades, the, ma the majority of them are, are all mom and pop operation where to be like one to three people in the whole company. And so we sell to a lot of those. We probably have 50 of them that we sell to at least that are weekly. We have several that are larger, but you know, the bulk of the companies are, are very small companies. Most of them have never invested any money in themselves to train. Most of them have never read, you know, so they, they don't know what they don't know. And I've hired a few that I saw and I'm like, man, this guy's going to be a killer, but he don't even know he's a killer. You know, my, my general manager in the other company, I mean, that's where I got him. So, I mean, he, um, but we've, we've done it several times where just where I see a lot of potential in a guy that he may not necessarily see it himself. Now, Vince just talked about hiring on personality. Another way to say that is hiring for culture fit. The personality being the personal traits that these people have, when they're in alignment with what the founders have, there's less frustration. For example, if they're okay with a reactive way of being, but the founder's not, the founder's gonna be very frustrated with this person. If they are, um, if the founder is someone who is decisive and these other people are not decisive, it's going to be very frustrated. So when you're looking at culture fit, you want to make sure that you're able to define what your culture is. Not easy to do, but you want to make sure you have a way to understand who you are as a company. One way to do that is by looking at your high performers you already have and try to assess the personality traits and what makes them successful in their individual roles and really try to understand, do we want more people like that? You probably do, uh, but you want to make sure that you um, are able to ask questions that allow you to indirectly get whether there's a culture fit. If you ask someone, do you think you'd be a good culture fit here? They're going to say yes. But if you ask them a question that allows you to assess where they really are, then you're much more likely to get an answer you need that can you can work with and decide whether this is the right person or not. Uh, back to Vince. You know, Vince, this is a question that it's just curious inside me, but I think a lot of people listening in are curious too. Like, how do you assess someone's potential? When you're in the hiring process, they're trying to put their best foot forward. They're trying to to convince you and persuade you no matter what, because they're hopefully they want to work. Well, I mean, we I I mean I'll probe. I don't know. I, I go against what some people tell me. We don't, I don't necessarily have a, a list of questions that I ask every single one. And I know that's one of the things that the coaches tell me to do, but I just have conversation with them. And, and I want to know, you know, of course, what, what have you done? What led you to this point? What are your goals? You know, what motivates you? You know, if I could, have, if, if, if you could have any job in the company that you, that we have, I told you, you could have any of them. What would that job be? Why, why, you know, why would you want that job? You know, and, and it'll give you some pretty decent indicators on, you know, what their goals will be. Because if you if you just come straight out and go, where you want to be in five years? And and I'll ask that sometimes. A lot of them never thought about more than tomorrow. So then you, you got to probe a lot deeper into, into that. You know, what are the biggest accomplishments? I mean, these, and the, some of this stuff came from a lot of different books that I've read. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll actually... Because a lot of the people that we're hiring are younger people. You know, tell me what you did in high school. Did you play any sports? Did you play in the band? You know, what did you do in high school that made you a winner? You know, because if you were never, if you've never experienced winning, the chances you're going to pick it up now are going to be slim and none. You know? <laughs> okay. I like that. Um, any other questions that allow you to, to assess someone's potential that might be a little bit off the, the usual or common place? 
I mean, I'll ask about reading now, or and when I say reading for me, that means audible. I don't read it hardly ever read anything. Physically. Okay. But you know that that's a big indicator um, if a guy's going to be successful or not. You know what type of roles have you had? Uh, of course, some of this is going to be age dependent, but what are the previous roles? What promotions you get? You know the, the, that scenario it usually is a pretty good indicator. If they if they've worked at three or four different jobs and every single one of them they got promoted and then they got to hating their boss and they left. You know that's a pretty common thing. Yeah. It's also a watch indicator because it could be the same thing that's going to try to happen to you if you hire them. But, yeah. you know, the, the big thing there is growth. You know, I mean, I mean, we're big on vision statements. I mean, I, we maintain a five-year plan, you know, because the, the big deal is that whatever my goal is, you know, it's got to be big enough that it, that it can handle everybody's goal that works under me. You know, because the, the moment that their goal is bigger than the company's, they're gone. Does that mean you're a Dan Sullivan fan? I do, I do read, yeah, I have read some of that. I mean, it, but it's in several, you know. And Which is good about his book. He's pretty consistent. He's got the same thing across a lot of his different books and, and whatnot. Dan's been on the, sh the podcast before, so you're in good company. <laughs> but Vince. yeah, I, you know, and the reading thing, I mean, and I, I mean, why I put so much emphasis on it is, you know, that's what started me down when, when we were able to obtain the kind of growth to even to be on the E5000. It, you know, that's where I started with, was so I'm like, you know, I'm getting motivated because I'm tired of, I mean, it took us, I, we've been in business now for 15 years. The other company, Wholesale, has been there for six, but um, it took about 10 years to get to $1 million in revenue. And then, you know, from that, basically from that day, about that time was when I started the Wholesale company and when I went on the major growth on the, in the second company. And we, from then we went from 1 million revenue to last year, we completed about 30 million in revenue between the two. This year will probably be $40 million in revenue. And Fantastic. Uh, so it's, you know, there, there, there are just a lot of things in these, from these books that you pick up on that, um, you know, and then I got involved in coaching. I mean, that was another, you know, the, a lot of it was coaching groups, you know, and, just seeing other successful people, seeing a lot of people that are in the exact same boat that you're in, you know, what are they doing to, to change? But, but, the, you know, and then part of that, I mean, we, we outgrew one of the coaching companies. I mean, we got when that one, the first one I was in and I give them, uh, I won't name them if, if you don't want me to, but I mean, it got us, well, it's kind of that, that saying that sometimes the people that got you here aren't the people that get you there. And yeah, coaching group was that way. I mean, that, that uh, I owe them tons or I would have never been to the place we are now, but we became as much of a coach as they were, you know, once we got to a certain size, I mean, they, they fit a very good niche, but, but, uh, but the, the coaching's a big deal. I mean, they're, they're for me and for the company, both companies. Well, I'm glad you said that. that. And I'm not going to take any credit for that. Cause I'm not your coach or, or anything, but I, I uh, love the fact that people, lean into coaching. I, I know I perform better. I, any conversation I've had with my wife about an investment in myself, she's basically always given me a blank check because she knows that I'm, I'm going to be, you know, smart with it. I'm going to, you know, not take uncalculated risk. I'm going to invest in myself and I'm going to make sure it pays off. So I'm glad that you feel that way about coaching. I do want to take us back into this conversation on finding the right people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are struggling. I mean, I say people, a lot of my clients are struggling with assessing someone's potential for leadership within your experience, within the hiring, all the people that you've had across these multiple companies. Um, how do you assess someone's leadership capacity? That's a good question. Um, I mean, a lot of it is said uh, it, it's uh, I guess it, it can vary. I'll first say, because we, we try to promote from within as much as we possibly can. We've grown so fast. So that's not been, always the case the ones that we promote from within they just show up i mean it, it's very evident if you're looking for people that are leaders and now we have had some leaders that led people in the wrong direction <laughs> they were okay. very good leaders they just weren't leading the direction that we wanted to and created chaos mm -hmm. but um and those people i mean honestly the best performing salesperson that I've ever had work for me. 
I fired for that. And that was a, that was a painful day. Still a bit painful when I think about what he's actually able to produce. But man, he was just like crazy toxic. I mean, walk in the room and just instantly stirring up stuff. (laughs) I've seen it through my coaching. I'm sure you've seen it through all the companies you've built. Uh, Vince, we're having a good conversation on finding the right people as you grow your company. What have we not discussed that you feel like is really important to this conversation? So I'll tell you one of the most successful things that I've found, and this is hiring overall. I'll just give you a nugget that most people don't do because you'll hear all these people say that MD doesn't work. And I will tell you that if you think you're going to go place an ad on Indeed and magic happens, all you got to do is place the ad, maybe sponsor the ad, you know, we'll get maybe one out of a hundred that we'll get from that. The key on Indeed, and I use it almost daily for searching, is under the search resume function. Um, It costs, um, we pay maybe $500 a month or something, but uh, to have, it's about how many people you contact. It's not really necessarily the search itself. It's a minimal fee just to be able to search, but you've got just a uh, limited amount of information you can get unless you pay a little bit more to contact them. So, I mean, I, I literally just start searching keywords and resumes and, you know, you'll have a uh, geographic restriction of some sort um, that, you know, depending on how far you want to search. And I mean, I just hired a sales guy a few months ago this way because in garage doors, there are very, very few people that have any experience in doors other than garage door installers. Garage door installers are typically not people that are going to be garage door salespeople. I went through, I think I searched out to about 200 miles, maybe 250. And I found three people on there that had the exact experience that we wanted. And so I contacted all of them. You can, and some of them will give you your email. Some give email and phone. Some even give text ability. It's depend. that's on them on how much freedom they want to give. But I literally would just sit down and start writing a letter. I mean, you know, or not write a letter. That makes me, that ages me a little bit. Uh, (laughs) Send an an email um, to them, but it's a personalized deal. If you want a response, it's you talk about what you see in their resume. You talk about the opportunity that you have, and you will get an extremely high response rate. And once they come in, I mean, a lot of it, first thing I look at is just, you know, my first impression, you know, did they show up on time? Did they, what are they, what were they wearing? You know, all the simple stuff. And uh, of course, some people think that doesn't matter and sales, it absolutely matters. I don't care if they're customer facing or not. They can't present themselves. You don't want them. But that is a huge deal in, in every job that we hire. Now, an entry level, we don't pay anybody minimum wage, but will we be considered an entry level type job? You know, those you run an ad and you're going to get hundreds. It's more of the specialized. If it's mm-hmm. a licensed guy, if it's a, you know, top sales guy, general managers, even mid-level managers, those are the people that if you go in there and invest the time and speak to them directly, it is unbelievable the response that you will get. Love that detail, Vince. Thanks for being here, sharing your wisdom, talking about how to find the right people. Yep, you're welcome. Wow, what a great interview. I love having these conversations with people that are in the trenches talking about what works, what doesn't work. That little piece at the end where he talked about you know, using the search function in Indeed, he gave me a little tip that I'm going to add on to this. So if you're listening to here, you get a bonus that most people probably have already uh, checked out for. But the bonus tip here is when you find someone in a higher level kind of role that you want and you really want to get this person or at least have the conversation, Get their private email address. It's hard to do, but you got to find a way to do it and send them a video response. And so instead of typing out your message, send them a personalized video response. And uh, Vince talked about how he, I saw the smile on his face. He goes, it just works. He, it allows you to, to break through the noise of, of the people that you want to go after, allows you to connect with them because you can personalize it. You can do this much quicker than typing. And you can actually get a feel of, of the emotion that you want them to hear about this opportunity about the company and about them. And that really does translate into them taking action. Uh, I really think it's a great tip. So hopefully you'll be able to execute on this. When you think of growth and you think of leadership, think of growth thinking. As always, we encourage. We'll see you next time.